was a feast day. Amen. And that's not a high holy feast day, but it's a memorable feast day that we remember. Amen. Amen. Because of what the Most High did. Amen. For his people. Amen. Amen. So if you look at the book of Esther, and I don't want to go through the whole story. You all, I know we teach it every year, and most of you have been here, except for a few when we talk on girl. So, we're going to paraphrase. Amen? But, Barbara, you got it? Well, just go ahead from the very first verse and just start reading so that we'll get an idea, and then we'll take it from there. Okay, who else? Gigi, you got it over there? Start reading for me. Okay, all right. Shadow of the church today. Queen Vesta is a type 
and shadow of us in the church today. The king Ahasuerus is a type and shadow of Yeshua Hamashiach, the king. The king, because I'm going to paraphrase and make it quick, the king had a feast. And he called for the church, Queen Vestai, to come to the feast. And she refused. Liken unto the day, today, when he called in his people to the feast days of the Most High. They got the knowledge. People are giving, them, giving it to them. They're talking to them. They're telling them about the feast days, the Torah, returning to his teaching and instruction. Amen? And they refused to come out. Amen? They refused to come to the feast days. They're saying in their heart, like Queen and Meshtai, which is the shout of the church, and we didn't get that far. I'm going to set up my own feast day. So at the very time that King Hazarus set up his feast, type and shadow of the Most High in his feast days, the Queen Vesta set up a counterfeit feast day, whereby you have today in the church, we have counterfeit feast days, Christmas, Easter, all of these feast days. She set up a counterfeit feast day and refused to come to the King's feast when he called for her. Amen? Amen. It's type and shadow of what's going on right here right now in the church. Amen? Amen? So what did he do? He called the wise men and he said what should we do? The wise men said she should no longer come. See, it's coming down when I told you last week, the rubber is going to meet the road. You're going to come, the church is going to come to a crossroad where they have to make a decision. And if they don't make the right decision, amen, at that time when everything is culminating together, they're going to be like the five foolish virgins who knew that they had to have oil in the lamp. But they went out to meet the bride, the groom, and they didn't have their oil. And they're going to say, let us in, let us in. And the door is going to be closed like on Rosh Yom Kippur when the door closes. Amen? So here we are now. We're in the midst of the congregation that he's calling and he's wooing out. And some of us like us today, we've come out. We are into the feast days. Amen? Preparation period. So what did he do? He went out and he got a bride. Who's the bride? Who's the chosen one? We are. Amen? And he called them to come into 12 months a preparation period, Queen Esther. She came out. She wasn't of influence. She didn't have a mother or a father. She lived with her uncle. He raised her in the ways of the law. She wasn't, they weren't rich people, in other words. They were caught in the midst of captivity when Judah was captive, captive into Babylon. And when they were had an opportunity to go back to the land, they stayed in a type of shadow of Egypt, which was Shushan. That's how they got caught up into the thing that they were in. Because there were opportunity when they, captivity was over. You've got to read the whole five books of Esther. When captivity was over, Mordecai and his family and some of the Jews was all spread about in the land, didn't go back to the land. Type and shadow of us here today. Everybody will not exodus to the land. Some people will stay here in Shushan, Egypt, Babylon, when that exodus happens. Everybody's not going to go. So when they stayed in the land, they got caught up into what happened with Haman hating the Jews. Amen? So backing it, backing it up a little bit, he switched and called for the chosen queen, Esther. The queen that had already been in preparation, already learned the law, already had been schooled by the Jew Mordecai in the Torah. Went through her 12 months of preparation. How many of you know it was a setup? It was a divine appointment. It was a Moedim. Amen. For her to be in the right place at the right time to save her whole group of people. 
Amen? So he calls for the new queen. Now the new, we got a new queen, Esther. Best died, she missed out. So now the new queen is in the kingdom, and all of a sudden things are going good. You've got to remember, she came from lack, and she went into prosperity. How many of you know, we come from lack. We're moving into prosperity. Amen. You gotta understand this. You gotta know this about yourself. Amen. And so now all of a sudden, it's in the, I think it may be in the third chapter of, of Esther. Here comes our enemy. The enemy of the Jewish people. According to the Bible. I would dare to say the Hebrew people. Amen. Haman. Hamas. They come to destroy the plan of the Most High. Amen. What did Haman say? There's a people spread abroad that do not, do not keep your ways and your laws. But they have their own laws. There's not like unto your laws, King. What can we do with these people? What would you suggest we do? I suggest that we, you know, Hang them. Take all their goods. Take all their money. Get all their silver. Wipe them out. That was the plan. Amen. But when you go ahead and read on, but God had a plan. It was a divine setup. Just like right now, today, saints, we are sitting in the midst of a divine setup. He is moving us into the kingdom of prosperity into his kingdom. We've already, we, we're already moving today. The kingdom means God's movement on the earth. The kingdom is in us. And we're moving on the earth. Amen. The kingdom is moving through us. Amen. And so now you see the enemy comes. As soon as you get of a blessing, and it's just like us today, he tries to bless you. And before you can even recognize and thank you and say, Torah, yeah, here comes the enemy. And all of a sudden now, they're not looking at the blessing. We're looking at the enemy. Mordecai, there's something fell in him. He stood at the gate. He wouldn't even bow to Haman. Every day he stood there, wouldn't bow, refused to bow. But all of a sudden, when the decree went out from the king, because when the king makes a decree, it cannot be changed. So the decree went out from the king and says, Haman can do whatever he wants to. He can kill him, you know, he can, you know, take their silver, whatever. So that decree went out and Mordecai got the decree and something fell in him. Ashes and sackcloth. He's mourning. All the Jews throughout the province is mourning. Y'all got to read the whole story. They're all mourning because now on a certain day, at a certain time, they're going to be annihilated. Finally, Queen Esther gets wind of it and she says, what is it? Why is Mordecai mourning and ashes and sackcloth and no clothes. She sends him some clothes. He refused her. He refused her. Then he told her, he, he sent a message to her and told her, you need to go to the king. And how many of you know that maybe, he told her, you were brought to the kingdom for such a time as this. Not to keep quiet. That's what we are, saints of God. See, sometimes we really want to keep quiet. My boys stay on me about, just, just give it to him. Just give it to him. Just give it to him. Amen? But me, I want to kind of ease it in on them. Amen? But Mordecai said to Esther, how do you know that you have been brought into this kingdom for such a time as this? And don't think for one minute, if you don't go to the king on our, on our behalf, that you won't be saved. Because you and your house will perish and he will raise up someone else to take your place. We can't keep quiet. We got to get this word out. We got to get the message. So she said, well, do you know that if I go into the court, the court being a type of shadow of the holy place, amen? If, do you know if I go into the court and he does not hold out the scepter, it means automatic death. In other words, paraphrasing it, Mordecai, Mordecai said, well, you're going to die anyway if you don't. So, this is what you need to do. What did she say?
everybody, all the Jews, and me and my mates will also fast. Amen? He said, and then I will go into the court, the holy place, unannounced. We cannot go into the holy place of the Most High without him moving us in. The holy place, the outer court, and the holy of holies. Amen? And so she went in to the outer court, and he bade her to come in. She found favor with the king. Y'all know the story. Amen? Amen? Amen. She found favor with the king, and the king, she set up the dinner and everything, and all of the long story short, everything backfired on Haman. He had ten gallows set up, representing the ten tribes. He had ten sons. Always a counterfeit, saints of God. There's always a counterfeit to whatever the Most High is doing. There's always a counterfeit. Amen? Bottom line, his ten sons and him, they were all hung on those gallows that they had set up to hang Mordecai and the, and, and the Jews. Amen? Amen? So we're in this situation right now. Into the kingdom. Where we have a voice that he has given us. He's called us out. He said, come out of her. Come out of her. Come to my feast days. What have we done? We've all come out. We all have. We celebrate the feast days of the Most High. Amen? But how many of you know we got a real enemy? Just like Queen Esther, Mordecai, we have a real enemy. Because he recognizes that when the Most High, the King, Yahshua HaMashiach, set a feast day, amen, Yahweh, we had no knowledge of the feast day. So we couldn't come to the feast day because we had no knowledge of it, right? But all of a sudden, the blinders now have come off of our eyes and he's wooed us by the Ruach HaKadosh to come to the feast days. And what did we do? We came to the feast days. Yeah. Now what happens? We're in the feast days. We're in the blessings. Everything should be really moving and going good for us, but guess what? There's a real enemy. There's a Haman, a Hamas that do not want to see the plan of the Most High carried out in our lives because we are a remnant of chosen people, sons of God, that he has brought into the kingdom for such a time as this to bring a word to a dying world, amen, that, that they have counterfeit feast days. It's our job. He called us out, and he said, now, what did, what did Mordecai tell her? Don't be quiet. Now, if you be quiet and shut your mouth and don't say anything, you're going to perish as well. See, he didn't bring us out for us to hold it and say, oh, I celebrate the feast days and that's it. No, he brought us out as forerunners so that we would be able to bring in those that are hurting, those that are searching, those that he had already called and that he had already chosen, but the blinders have been on their eyes. Amen. He's removing the blinders from their eyes now, and they're searching. And our job is because we're being put in position is to give them the knowledge. Amen. Amen. Not being concerned about Hamas, our enemy, who comes to cause us to lose focus on the word. To cause us to lose focus on the feast days, the blessings, the things that he is doing for us as we are going forth doing what he tells us to do, Hamas comes and says, mm, ah, that hurt. So if you got that pain, you cannot think about the blessings and who you're going to bless and who you're going to give this word to. Because all of a sudden, you're consumed now with pain and headaches and backaches and all of these aches and pains because... The enemy does not want you to do what he's called you to do. But how many of you out here, you really know that in spite of yourself, in spite of your own pain, you still, because ministry doesn't stop because we get a headache. Amen. Amen. I can't lay down and say I'm not going to come up here and teach if my head hurts. Amen. I still have to, I have to be here whether I'm hurt or not. And a lot of times I might be hurt, you know, but you won't know it. Amen. And that's the mindset that we have to be in. And God honors it because we're not looking at the flesh. We're not looking at the natural. We're looking at the spirit. And we're doing that what he has called and told us to do. He's going to take care of the rest. Amen. This is where we as a people have got to get this. 
We cannot be so looking at our circumstances. Sometimes our circumstances are bleak. But if you would look and get your eyes on what he's saying and what he's doing and all of your circumstances, he'll take care of those circumstances. I never look at circumstances. Thanks. Because circumstances are designed to depress you. That is not the will of the most high for your life. It is designed to keep you in oppression. Circumstances. If you cannot do anything about your circumstances, then don't worry about your circumstances. Give them to him. He said, cast your cares upon me because I care for you. He said, pull down all those imaginations and everything that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Every time Hamas, your enemy, comes against you, he exalts, his, he exalts himself against the knowledge of God in your life. But what do you do? You pull down that imagination and you stay focused on what the Most High is saying for you to do. That's what's going to get you the blessing. That's what's going to build your faith. He honors that type of faith. Amen. The very day that I got this kidney put in my body, the very next day, I was up out of the bed in the hospital at the ICU unit, standing outside. I walked down the hall, and a little Hispanic lady was bawling and bawling and bawling in the waiting room. I don't speak Spanish, but I go and tell there to talk to her, and I say, you know, you have someone in the ICU unit. She, don't, she can't understand me, I can't understand her. But what she understood was pray. So I said, can I pray? And she said, see, sí, see. Sí. So now I just had a major surgery. I'm cut from here to here. But I'm up on my feet in a waiting room praying for somebody whose loved one was in ICU unit and they didn't think that God was going to make it. Her son or her husband, I can't remember which one it was. But I stood there and I prayed for this lady's son and her husband. And, and I went on about my way down to the ICU unit. I stood outside the ICU unit, sit on the windowsill in a hospital gown. And everybody that came out of the ICU unit, I said, do you have someone in there that's sick or hurting? Can I pray for you? Can I pray for your loved ones? Everybody that came out, and I stopped, and they said, oh, yes, because everybody wants a prayer. Amen. And everybody, I stood there and prayed for their relatives in the ICU unit. When I got back around to the little Hispanic lady, she grabbed me and hugged me, because whatever, what the prop, whatever the problem was, that short amount of time, not looking at my own circumstances, not looking at, is this kidney going to actually take or reject? I mean, you know, they put one in your body, don't mean your body has to accept it. Not looking at my circumstances, but over here looking at, uh, looking at somebody else's knee and praying for someone else's knee. God honored that and touched her son. She hugged me. She was praying, laughing and crying. Amen. And I knew just spirit to spirit that God touched them and set that person free. You see, we not we can't have time to look at the fleshly things that's going on in our bodies and put aside the things of the Most High. He'll honor you if you do His bidding. Amen. Amen. How many of you would have done something like that? Amen. Just set your stuff aside, your stuff, and walk down there and pray for everybody else. You see, but that is. Because of the Ruach HaKadosh, he's got to live big on the inside of you. And he got to keep you focused right on the straight. You can't go to the left and right. You can't look at this stuff. Amen. Five years on dialysis, I never once looked at what was, what was really going on in my life. Because had I looked at my situation and my circumstances every day, three days a week, for four hours on a machine, it would have depressed me. Half the people in the dialysis center was depressed and oppressed and on medication for, you know, depression. 
of the kingdom right now for such a time as this. It's a blessed time. We don't even have half of a clue of what he's getting ready to do. We don't have half of a clue of how blessed we are. You're looking at everything going on around you, all of the Japan stuff, tornadoes, earthquakes. We're looking at all of that, and we don't have a clue of what he's doing right here in the midst of us. Amen. But we got to get a clue. We got to understand, no matter if a thousand fall at your right and ten thousand at your left, it shall not come nigh thy. Nigh thy dwelling. That's what the word says. Amen? But you have to believe the word. When you read it, believe it. Till it becomes a part of you. Amen? Amen? Amen. And I'm going to just wrap it up and bring it to a close right now. Um, it's just, it, it's a lot to that. I want you all to read the whole book. Because it's, it's talking about us today. Amen? You can see where we are in the book. Amen? And you're going to see a lot more of us coming out. And we have to be ready to receive them, to teach them, to love on them, not to be to our terrorists, not to beat them over the head with the book, amen, but to love them and to let them know that we serve a loving and most high, and he loves his people, amen, amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord, saints, amen. Uh, we're going to get ready to receive.